Hey, hey, party people. Welcome to the lingerie edition of Fashion Vocabulary Video Dictionary, my series of design and illustration combo tutorials. I have a whole playlist of them. I will drop a link to them in the description box below. Quick disclaimer, the words that I'm going to talk about in this video, they have been around for centuries and you know, definitions have changed throughout costume history, uh, but I'm going to try to really discuss them as how they are used now, current day, 2018. Corsets are a category of garments that bind the torso in with various kinds of structure. Corsets, they cover the bust, go down to the hip, uh, they can be, these days, worn as outerwear or innerwear. They can be very simple, they can be very elaborate, and I am deliberately drawing two different styles of boning placement just to show you two examples out of many, 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 many options that you have for style line placement. When you design your corset, make sure you don't make it too low on the hip because it will be difficult to sit and like have those bones digging into the tops of your thighs. Drop me a comment below if you would like a video in which I deep dive on corsets, how they're constructed, their vocabulary, design considerations and options things like that. And then the style of corset that starts right under the bust and ends at the hip is called a corselet or an underbust. You can have straight hems or curved hems with any of these styles. And then something that starts even lower is typically called a waist cincher. And with corsets, when I draw corsets, typically I will make the waist a little bit smaller than my fashion figure template to kind of give in that cinched in tight look. Corsets that start at the bust, covering the bust, and stop real high, like right around the waist, are called bustiers. And modern versions of all these garments, they can be super, like super structured uh, with the spiral steel bones and everything, or they can be a lot more relaxed, but just have kind of the outer aesthetic of the corset without too much of the pinching and sucking in and all of that. What I'm drawing now is called a Merry Widow. A Merry Widow is a bustier with attached garters. And then the garters would attach to some thigh-high stockings. And Merry Widows come in all different styles. You can have ones with bra cups like the one I just drew. They can look more typically like the corset I drew in the very beginning of this video. There, there are a lot of styles, but basically Merry Widows are a bustier with attached garters. And I probably should have drawn panties with this whole getup. That's probably what would have made everything look complete, but yeah. Women will typically wear panties with this getup. And the Merry Widows, they can be boned and structured like corsets, or there are a lot of styles that are just done with a simple stretchy lace, stretchy shears, meshes, satins, all kinds of stuff. The Merry Widow has attached garters, but you can also get separate garter belts that are just the item itself. They typically sit kind of low on the hips, and then they have the garters front and back, situated around like where the princess seam or like the center of each leg. And some countries call them suspender belts. A lot of people confuse Merry Widows with teddies. Merry Widows are again the bustier style with the garters attached, 
worn with panties and thigh highs typically. Teddies are, they're basically the lingerie version of a one-piece bathing suit. Okay, they cover the torso, wrap around the crotch. It's the whole shebang in one piece. And again, uh, just like Merry Widows, they come in all different kinds of styles with bra cups, strapless, halter, you know, halter with a keyhole in the front, different severities of boning, uh, very stretchy and slinky, also some more structured styles, you know, lace panels, all kinds of styles, but basically the teddy is a one piece, okay, without needing separate panties. Body suits are not lingerie, but I'm just throwing this in here for comparison's sake. Body suits are worn as tops. Honestly, the difference between teddies and body suits and leotards are really about the material that is used because of where they're going to be worn. Teddies, usually in the bedroom. Body suits, out and about in town. Leotards. Uh, are typically done in performance fabrics because you're going to be dancing and sweating in them. Slips are loose, easy fitting layering pieces. Of course, lots of people buy slips and just wear them as nightgowns, but slips traditionally are a layering piece worn under your garments, sometimes as Kind of a nice warm layer sometimes as kind of a heat and body oil sweat kind of barrier layer and slips they come in a wide variety of fabrications necklines they're usually sleeveless um, different lengths different slip placements you can have a lot of lace trim at the hem at the neckline and with the half slips, which are just the skirt portion, you'll typically find that they have a very gentle, easy, elastic waist. Because these are supposed to, you're not supposed to really feel these garments. They're supposed to be these like easy fit layers between you and your outer clothes. Camisoles or camis for short, they're basically the top half of the slip traditionally worn as the under layer of just the top portion of your outfit. But these days, people often wear them as a top as well, like a little satin charmeuse tank with a little bit of lace trim. Pinoirs are basically fancy bathrobes. They're dressing gowns. The difference between pinoirs and bathrobes are typically the fabric. Pinoirs are typically done in really dressy fabrics, some satin charmeuses or even chiffons uh, or georgette, something slinky, something nice to wear when you're sitting at your vanity putting cold cream on your face. <laughs> anyway, so modern day, a lot of people call these kimonos, uh, not to be confused with traditional Japanese kimono, but the more bathroom category. Chemises are very similar to slips. They are a type of slip, but chemises tend to be more fitted at the waist, not in any kind of corseted, girdle sort of way, but definitely more fitted with some kind of darting or tucking or waistie. Baby dolls are dresses that are typically worn as a little nighty as opposed to a layering piece under clothes. They are not always, but often on pure, which means the waist is just under the bust. And they are often very short, sometimes so short that you can see the panties below the hem. And many of them are sheer or have many sheer parts. Negligé is pretty much a fancy way of saying nightgown and these are typically the longest style of these lingerie dress type things. They typically have sleeves, not always, 
And much like the other lingerie pieces, there's a lot of room for design, fabrication, variation within the negligee category. I just drew one out of many style options. Next, let's talk about brassieres or bras for short. And I'm going to be defining a lot of different styles, but again, just like other lingerie, there's a lot of room for design variation within each sort of style that I mentioned here. This first one I'm drawing is a full cup, which means it covers the majority of the breast. And these, I just drew a simple princess line seam, but these bras can have different seam placements. They can have an underwire, they can be wireless, they can be a halter strap or a racer back, you know, all these variations. And of course, many different fabrication options. The second one is called a demi, and demis cover lef, less of the breast. Okay, so this is a nice style for more low cut tops. And then we have, if you want something that's even lower, <laughs> this is a balconette style. It kind of looks like a balcony, I guess, is where it got its name from. I'm not too sure, don't quote me on that one. But yeah, it's very low. I mean, some styles you can see part of the areola because it's cut so low. But, you know, it's a little sexy style. And again, you can have different straps and fabrics and whatnot. With many of the bras that I'll be drawing in this video, you can also have it be a push-up style, which means that it's structured to push the breasts up and kind of maximize cleavage. And so the only difference in drawing is I make sure that the cleavage is much more prominent. But again, you can have a lot of different style variations. There are so many different kinds of push-up bras out there. This one is a bit of a novelty, a bit of a more of a costume thing these days. This is a bullet or cone bra. Uh, the most famous version being the one Madonna wore made by Jean-Paul Gaultier. And it's made by several layers of fabric stitched and kind of quilted together. It with s stitches in circles, creating kind of a target. <laughs> this next one is a plunge bra. And this category of bras, they're structured so that you can wear plunging necklines with them. So if you ha are wearing a v-neck that ends below where a typical bra strap would sit, you would wear one of these styles that has a much lower band. This next one is called the triangle bra because each bra cup looks like a triangle. And these are typically not very structured, you know, some gentle darts or seaming to create shape, but not a lot of underwire or padding for tons of support. Some of this terminology also works for swimwear. This one is definitely one of them. This is a bandeau, and it's just a wide strip that goes around the chest, and it is shaped with a combination of stretch and or seaming. Some of the more supportive styles have bones in the side seam and some of them also come with straps. Soft cup or wireless bras just means that they don't have the underwire, but these can also be quite structured in different ways and come in a lot of different silhouettes. Bralettes, on the other hand, are very not structured at all. They don't have wires, they don't have padding. They're basically like tank tops, but super short with an elastic band around your rib cage. okay? They're just typically very pretty, not made for much support. T-shirt bras are any bras that are really smooth so that you can wear tight things on top and you don't see any darts or seams or trims kind of poking through to the outside. 
sports bras are a huge category and on their own and they are typically made out of performance fibers to wick away sweat and they're made in categories of how much support you want. I'm just drawing one kind of typical style. Some of them have these front zippers. Many of them you just pull over your head. Uh, some have the traditional like back hook, bra hook sort of look. Many of them have thick straps for support and comfort. A lot of them are racer backs so that you don't have bra straps slipping off during a lot of physical activity. Let's move on to underwear or panties or undergarments or small clothes is an old school term that I've recently fallen in love with. Speaking of small clothes, you don't get much smaller than a G-string. G-strings are the ones that have just like the tiny triangular patch in the front and dental floss to just basically connect the rest of it all together. It is the tiniest bit of underwear that one could wear. Whereas thongs, they, they are... There's some fabric. <laughs> uh, the thong definitely leaves your butt cheeks bare, but has a strip of fabric that kind of sits in between your butt cheeks. Usually just forms a wedgie, but technically it's not supposed to. <laughs> these, both these styles are great for uh, reducing BPL, visible panty line. And then we have the style that cuts right across the butt cheek diagonally. You know, people call this the cheeky style, the Brazilian cut, tangas, uh, which is a new term for me. But yeah, this to me is like the most visible of panty lines because it just cuts right across the butt. But it's really popular with a lot of swimsuit styles to kind of show a little bit of the butt without it being a total thong sort of thing. And then bikinis or bikini briefs and briefs, they're all kind of in kind of a almost interchangeable category where these are the most kind of standard cover the bum underwear. You know, bikinis and bikini briefs are on the smaller side. Briefs are a little bit bigger, you know, higher waisted. And then these are French cuts. And French cuts are high waisted and with a high cut leg. And this style isn't super popular right now, but, you know, everything comes back. So it'll be back soon enough. <laughs> And then the last two styles I want to go over, we have the hipster style where the waistband sits around the hips and the leg cut is low. So it just kind of wraps the hips and it does cover most of the bum. And then little boy shorts are kind of... Uh, the trend started mimicking boxer briefs, men's boxer briefs. And so they are a little bit of a short. They have like one to two inch bit of pant leg. And so a lot of the time, you know, you can, they will do like a center back seaming because you have to accommodate an actual pant leg. Bonus. Can you guess what I am drawing right now? This ruched, shared, ruffled, ribbon and bowed, cute little monstrosity. <laughs> These are old school bloomers. You know, the older ones, they're quite long, but I just drew cute short ones because they're cute. <laughs> So there you have it. Please do give me a thumbs up on this video if you found it helpful or amusing. Uh, drop me all your questions in the comments section below. Share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I will see you in the next video.